I've waited a hundred years And I'd wait a million more Thursday. Welcome back to Morning Coffee with your host, Rick Alexander. Currently, I am in Canada for the next like 10 or so days. So if you guys hit me up at Rick Alexander underscore on Instagram or at Lionheart Radio, I'm not ignoring you. Most of you, I always try to get back to you, but I'm not ignoring you. I'm off the grid helping out with some executive education, leadership stuff, some speaking and uh, helping with some performance psychology stuff and putting people through a battery of tests. So later on, I'll be able to talk more about that. But right now, Uh, They've asked us not to speak about it too much publicly, so I don't know if I'm going against that by telling tens of thousands of people on my little radio show, but either way, we will definitely dive into lessons learned and things like that when I return. Yesterday, one of the things that I talked about was the fact that your world occurs inside of your head, and so if you want to change your world, then you got to start by having a really close look at the narratives inside of your head. Now, that's a difficult thing to do because sometimes... What we do is we act subconsciously and we do something that we're not super proud of. But in that moment, it's like it's almost as if we're asleep. It's like we we lightly recognize that we're doing something that we don't want to be doing, but we continue to do it out of compulsion or something like that anyway. So one of the things that really changed my life a while back was this some, this thing I did. It was called a moral inventory. And we do similar things in the Clarity Academy. But essentially, the point of it is to bring more of your life into the light. Now, I'm going to say light. I like this idea of light and dark being like axiomatic representations of good and evil. And so I kind of think it makes sense for us. Like if you think about the parts of your life that are in the dark that aren't serving you, there's likely a narrative around those things that are also not serving you. And so one of the things to do is to think about all of the ways that your life is currently out of alignment and to try to bring even small things, like the more of your life that you can bring into the light, that you can recognize it, you can identify the narrative around it, and then identify your goals in that area of your life, then it's no longer happening outside of your consciousness, outside of your ability. And so today the question is, what parts of your life are you allowing to sort of be on the back burner or to exist in the shadows that people don't really see, but that you know is actually hurting you? Now, chances are you probably have these things because we all have little pacifiers, little ways that we can sort of help deal with the burden of being is what it really comes down to. Like when you really think about it, what we're doing is trying to ease some of the resistance that we have to our lives. And, you know, something should be said for humans, which is the fact that, you know, in the back of your head, you never really forget that your time here is finite. And that matters. Like we don't we don't think about it a lot of times because it can be awful to think about. But the problem is you have this realization in the back of the head, in the back of your head that not only is your time finite, but that you are increasingly fragile in a very brutal world. And so when you talk talk about anxiety and you talk about the different like ailments that we have, a lot of times we have these beliefs and we don't think enough about what that really means. And because we don't think about it, our brain is still processing it and we're still getting pain from it. We're just not acknowledging it. And so all of the things in your life that you have questions about, the existential dread, the literally every single thing, like don't ignore it because you're going to spend your life ignoring it and realize that you had all these coping mechanisms in order to ignore it and none of them were actually serving you. And that's why we have pacifiers in the first place. That's why porn is so fucking big right now. That's also why we use alcohol or drugs to excess. That's why we do a lot of these things because they numb us. Like when it really comes down to it, what they do is they numb us to the burden of being. And so the more of your life that you can acknowledge, even the things you're scared of, the more you can acknowledge and begin to think through, you can at least start to give yourself some semblance of peace. 
and look, it's like I, it's like I say a lot of times, like if you think about the idea of darkness and bad things in your life, they literally cannot exist in the light. That's the thing about darkness. It can't exist in the light. And so if you have these parts of your life that scare you or you have insecurities around or you're afraid, then you have to bring them into the light because that's where nothing bad can exist. So as you bring them into the light, you start to realize that there's more there than you thought and you actually know more than you thought. And if you act on what you want, you're going to find that you're more capable in life than you thought. Like people are by and large very unaware of their own power in order to change the things in their life. And because they feel powerless, they feel like a victim. And when you're a victim, you can't ever do shit. But I think the way that it, the way that you really change that in your head is you have to be very honest with yourselves about the parts of your life, the parts of your psyche that you allow to exist in the shadows and you allow to exist in the dark. And those things, they tear us up and they, they tear us apart without us really even knowing where or why. There's a lot of ways that I talk about where we can identify dissonance in our lives. But one of those ways is by understanding that there's so many parts of your life that you're just not addressing and you're going through the nine to five and you're keeping yourself busy and you're paying the bills and you're helping with the kids and you're, you know, and you're doing your best to be a good partner and all of these things, but you can't do more in order to skirt the things that you really care about or really think about. They're going to exist in your consciousness, whether or not you make yourself conscious of them. And then they're going to play themselves out just like the narratives in our head. And that's the thing, because you have a narrative about that thing. And so if you think about like death or something that we, we really tend to avoid, your narrative is probably something like it's really scary and I'd rather not think about it. Only you don't have that option because you are sentient and self-aware. So it's always back there. So bring things that you're worried about into the light. Find people that can help talk you through them to gain some wisdom and some understanding around those things. And then you can start to put different parts of your life to rest that currently are serving to keep you further away from the thing that you really want. Because here's the deal. If you think about our finite amount of time on this earth, you really can't afford, in my opinion, to spend a lot of it on pacifiers. You can't spend a lot of it just bullshitting and wasting time just so you don't have to do the thing that you really want to do. Because we don't have that much time and you never know when it's going to end. You being aware of that, of course, is what we're talking about in the first place. But I think it's worth it to address these things solely so that you can rescue some of your time back and you don't find yourself, you know, burning days and days on Netflix just so that you don't have to deal with the burden of being. Now, you might say, that's not why I watch a lot of Netflix. I watch it because I'm into it or whatever. But there's always a thing behind the thing. There's always an overarching reason and any one thing probably has a much bigger why behind it. And a lot of times when we allow parts of our life to exist that we're scared of or don't want to acknowledge, then that will manifest as all of these other things. It feels to you like, oh no, I just want to do this. But the, the thing is deep down, you want to do that because you don't want to do something else. And that's almost always the case. So you can really go deep thinking about this in your own life and how it applies. But honestly, I would suggest that you do. Love you guys. I'll talk to you later on Morning Coffee. Oh, hungry ghosts in the land of milk and honey. Oh, hungry ghosts in the land of milk and honey. There are people so damn poor, all they have is their money. There are people so damn poor.
just visiting. Because in the end we're only visiting 